Good morning. Is this the mic I use or is it there? There. Good morning. It is a thrill to be here. This is the highlight of my teaching career. Every Sabbath when we get to have music groups from the academy in the church service, it's what I've done for about 26 years of academy teaching, and I just love it. So I want to thank the Umatilla Strings for joining us. It's the first time we've put the get group together in this large of an orchestra. Um, for about four years, four or five years now, we've had a volunteer group from the academy that's able to come during Christmas break and join the Christmas program here and that usually gives us a dozen or so total string players but it is really a thrill to get the idea hey why don't we put the whole group together and so I sent music ahead of time we rehearsed in the uh, fellowship hall area there and now we're performing together as a combined orchestra thank you very much for being here you Matilla strings and joining us it is a thrill how many of you are headed back to college after this some of you a few yeah, it's kind of a, a wide range orchestra and what, I, what thrills me as a music teacher is when students continue to play after their academy years. In fact, I've done that. Uh, in fact, so I tell the students at band, let's see, it's been 40, 46, 47 years that I've been playing trumpet. Got started in fifth grade beginning band and got hooked and have not been able to give it up since. It's an addiction that I don't want help with except to encourage me. It's one of those habits that you just want to keep all the way through and then play on the other side too, which picture yourself, we're playing now, but this is really a practice concert. The real concert begins when we are in heaven and they have chairs waiting for you in heaven's orchestra and they are waiting for you to come and fill those spots and can you imagine sitting beside angels that have played for a long time a lot more than I've played trumpet and be able to join together and they have so many more dimensions of music I'm sure they have amazing things because if you're gonna play that long you gotta have new things to keep going so anyway we are just a one of those steps closer, one Sabbath closer to when we are in the heavenly orchestra. The uh, next couple pieces we will play are from the Baroque period, and uh, this is a very buoyant music, continual spinning out, and it matches the joyful um, presentation and matches Psalm 150 of everything that has breath. Give praise to the Lord. Thank you. 
I've used the excuse for my wife. Um, you know, anybody here play golf? I, and you use more than one club, don't you? I mean, there's different lengths, different shots, and then if you get in the sand, and then you know, and you've got to drive and all that. I, I've I only played golf one time, the real thing. Um, and actually, if I could have had that for a bowling score, I would be really good. But because they go the opposite way, and I I got my money's worth. I got a lot of hits in those 18 holes. I got I. Did, did well in terms of that direction. But anyway, I've told my wife, it's like golfers, you need a variety of clubs for the different situations they're in, and that's why trumpet players need a variety of trumpets, depending what they're playing. So when I'm playing Messiah or Baroque pieces, this piccolo trumpet is the instrument uh, to use for that. And <clears throat> then you'll hear a flugelhorn later on that's a very mellow Trumpet, some halfway between a trumpet and a French horn, and then I have a couple others at home, the key of E flat for different uh, festive stuff that I play at graduation. Oh, and then my first year here, it was a thrill. My, at the, the uh, spring concert 10 years ago, um, the band uh, chipped in and got me a herald trumpet. That's the one where it's really long and it's supposed to have a banner at the end, which it doesn't have a banner yet, but it's a really long extended trumpet for those fanfares and stuff. Um, they, the band had heard, had, they had seen me very enchanted with the Disney Herald trumpet players that had come for the Thanksgiving program that Florida Hospital puts on at Calvary Assembly, and the Disney Herald trumpet players were there that year. First year I, I had moved down here from Washington State, and I get, wow. And I'm standing right there and listening to that. And they do that at candlelight when our, our academy choir goes and sings at Epcot at the candlelight. And those Disney Herald trumpet players come out there and there's three on that side, three on that side. And at one of the programs, I get to sit like right there in the director's area. Mark Becker gave me those tickets for my wife and I. And it was right in the line of fire. And I just thought, oh, wow. And it's just, you know, it, it's a thrill. So anyway, um, the, the variety of trumpets is, is what the point was. So this one here is made for the, the high Baroque playing, and this piece uh, will be another Baroque piece called Prelude to Te Deum.
It's not just trumpet that I have to use, more than one trumpet, it's for glasses now. There's a music stand length, I found out, optimum length 42 inches away, and I, a couple years ago at the eye doctor, I was having trouble just reading the music, but on these glasses I can drive, I can see the planets, I can read those license tags real close, I can do all of that, I can read, do tiny stuff, but that music stand length just needed that. So anyway, I got a special pair for that, so anyway, it's just one of those things you keep, as you keep progressing, you have to do that. And so I just keep running. Keep running is, is how I cope with, with the odometer turning over another year. And I just keep running, keep running. Because once I start cut back, cut, cutting back on the mileage for running, I'm on that downward slope. And I am not going there any sooner than I have to. So anyway, those of you that have started New Year's resolutions and all, actually I do those year round. There is no season on those. But I read an interesting book recently. It's called Mini Habits. I think it is M-I-N-I, many, like small habits. Because a lot of times what I used to do is set these big goals for the year and all. And it, sometimes I'd hit them. Although I did hit that Disney marathon goal because I found the ultimate motivator, the non-refundable entry fee. <laughs> when I sent that in in August, boy, clear till January, I had never been that consistent in my life. Because I knew if I don't make it, I'm not getting my money back and so and I'll have to you know I have this shirt that I didn't earn so I made sure I was there twice although the second time I did it when it was 27 degrees at the start and you have to get up at 3 30 in the morning for that well it's not quite quite as exciting but anyway but anyway so those of you that have launched new things you want to do this the bottom line of this book was just pick easy things, I mean, just break it down into small steps, daily steps. Like if you want to build up the number of push-ups you do or something, this guy, it, one of the big themes of his book, he does a lot of push-ups now, but he started with one push-up a day. It's like, can you do one push-up? Like, I'll just do that right now, just because so I didn't do it. <laughs> well, actually, I do quite a few more, but that's how you just do it, and you have victory. One. Okay, I've set the bar higher for myself, of course, but that's the bottom line. You do that every day. And if you want to read, um, say you want to read the Bible through in the year, well, just start one chapter. Well, w what happened when I started that, I I'm most the way through now, it was back in uh, October, and I started with Genesis on one Sabbath afternoon. Man, those stories were so exciting. 24 chapters later, all of a sudden, whoa, what time is it? And stuff. So, you know, you get down for one push-up, but you know what? You're already down. You've done the hardest thing with a lot of those goals, which is simply getting started. And so I wrote a whole bunch of lists, things for me to do, like play tuba, one minute. Vocalize, singing, one minute. Um, do some different exercises. Just do that. Well, guess what? Once you get started... It, you rarely stop at a minute, and all of a sudden you're doing it. So anyway, the tip there, I have found to reverse the thing, rather than the huge goals that are overwhelming, drop it down to those little tiny micro things that you're going to do every day, and then you just, once you're there, well, you're already doing it, and so chances are you're not going to close the book after one paragraph or something like that. You're going to keep reading. Anyway, that was uh, my New Year's tip for you there. And now on to Amazing Grace which God has been amazing to me. I've been a project for God. So anyway, this, how many of you have your mutes on for Amazing Grace? We're going to play, you'll hear a different sound out of the strings, very subdued. And that's because they take this little tiny piece of rubber that mutes the sound, gives it a very dark sound, and then when they slide it off, you hear the contrast. It's really a nice effect on Amazing Grace.
The flugelhorn that I was talking about is right here. You see the larger bell? So the tone is similar to the halfway between a trumpet and a French horn. It's a very nice instrument to like go into Schmidt Auditorium after school's out. I'm there late one evening or something. Just turn out all the lights, sit there on the stage, and just let the mellow sound fill up the auditorium. It's a nice way to relax, a great stress relief. Um, it works very well in these pieces in a minor key because of the dark tonality of the instrument to begin with. This piece, uh, Wayfaring Stranger, is one that I've played for a long time on the flugelhorn. It just seems to fit, and I really need to learn another one, but as long as I keep playing it at different churches, then I guess I get away with playing the same one over and over. Um, but the Wayfaring Stranger, the spiritual, reminds us that we don't have a permanent address here. I remember in college filling out forms, you know, and you'd have your dorm address and you have your permanent address. We don't have a permanent address here. Permanent address is heaven. Everything is temporary right now. We are just in that passage, just a, a tiny blinking of the, eye in, of the eye in heaven's eyes, but of huge magnitude because the decisions we make here affect whether we're going to choose and vote for Christ in our lives or a non-vote or a vote for Satan, whatever, and, and it's, at some point we're going to have to go into one of those two camps in, in, our, in our life experience here. Um, the Wayfaring Stranger, though, um, reminds me of, of how time on this earth is short. Um, Christmas vacation wasn't really good for, for me, the first part, because I got that phone call. My dad's 92, mom's 89, and I got that phone call that my dad had taken a turn for the worse. And so I flew up to Wisconsin and was able to spend about three days with him there. I think he knew I was there, but he was pretty much unconscious the whole time. He, what finally had brought him to the downturn was, was some cancer that he had. And I remember seeing, wow, I just saw him in June, but he has just really wasted away a lot. And he really, he stayed in the same position in bed for three days, and it was just like, this is, this is the end. This is the man who took my family camping, hiking, backpacking. We lived out in Washington State, and those memories are the first things I think of with Dad. Four seasons, whether it's winter or summer, whatever, in those mountains, Dad knew how to handle it, and it was great. Um, and things, building model airplanes. I remember that first Christmas memory of the, elect, the Lionel electric train set up around the tree when I came out of my room on Christmas morning. There was Dad, had it all set up in there. But, you know, he took a lot of interest in his family. So we had him for a long time. I learned a lot from him. Uh, when I was after school, grades 7 through 9 or whatever, but Dad had a gas station in town, like a one-man shop, except he needs somebody pumping gas because it was full service back then. So I would go after school and I'd work at dad's gas station and he'd be in the bay working on, you know, repairing engines and I'd be out pumping gas there. Had some great times, both, you know, in the mountains and then, you know, just learning those life lessons of, you know, my first job. And I remember, um, though I, I talked to him a bit and I, I think some of it sunk in, you know, just thanked him for all those times that he had spent with his family. And what dad is going through right now is that twinkling of an eye. If you just consciously right now just blink your eye like that, down and up. That's what it seems like. Dad was not a Christian um, until age 70. He, my mom, he was in the Navy, uh, joined in World War II. My mom happened to meet him in Bremerton, Washington there, a Navy town where she was working. She had to drop out of Auburn Academy in the 10th grade because times were tough, and she had to go to work as a nurse's aide. And uh, in the hotel lobby, she happened to, these happy-go-lucky sailors came by, and uh, they struck up a conversation, and that was how mom and dad met. <laughs> and a few years later, they got married, and then, you know, and had four kids, and then started traveling all over. And um, so that's how those great memories started. But I remember every day when I was little, you know, morning and evening, praying for dad to give his heart to the Lord. Well, mom prayed for him for 50 years. And then I got that phone call. When they were down in Arizona for the winter, mom saying, you know what, dad's going to be baptized tomorrow in church. 
And that was a thrill. One of the, I think one of those highlights, the, the highest points in my life, because I had prayed for dad all of my life. And when they came back up, uh, um, no, they were down there in the winter. Anyway, did I say summer? Anyway, they came back up, and we, were, we went camping in their RV. And before we started out one morning, uh, that morning, Mom said, Art, why don't you pray for us? And Dad prayed for our family and stuff, and then we took off down the road. And I, it dawned on me, that was the first time in my life I had ever heard my dad pray. But we didn't give up on him. God never gives up on any of us. And so no matter how much time we have in this life, and it may be short, it may be long by our terms, but it's all short by heaven's terms, we just use each day, give our lives to the Lord, give God a blank sheet of paper and say, here, you write the agenda today. Put people into my life that I can share the love of Jesus with and just use my words, my actions. And my dad did that with his family. And then those great times with the kids and road trips to Disneyland and all. Man. And I never doubted for a day, even though when my dad was not a Christian, that I never doubted for a day that my parents loved me. I knew it every day. We got hugs frequently. They took time with us. So even though he wasn't a Christian, he still loved us tremendously. And it was just like topping on the cake to hear that phone call that mom said, he's going to be baptized tomorrow. So anyway, the point of wayfaring strangers, remember, it's a short time here on earth, it's a long time in eternity, and God has got us in his hands.
one law takes care of all the other laws. It's that God is love. Everywhere else except on this little dot of a planet, love pervades. It's just how they live. And this planet, though, has some problems. But God's love is coming through in each person that turns their hearts to him. And one day, in the not-too-distant future, God's entire universe again will just be simply God is love. And we have the freedom to explore, to learn, to, to grow, to, to find out about those other worlds he's created. If you've ever gone to the Kennedy Space Center and you see that Hubble telescope, the IMAX, and they show those pictures from that, mind-boggling for us. But that's just par for the course for the people, for whatever God's creation is out there. And we'll be able to explore and, and take those tours. And, you know, ask somebody to show you around when you get the, oh, we've been waiting. We've got this trip for you right now. And they plan, and I think one of the questions we will get asked the most is why was it so hard to choose God? I mean, when we look at what he, he has to offer, look at the fruits of the Spirit in, in Galatians 5. Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, faithfulness, all those. And there aren't any laws against that. Why wouldn't we want to have that is just the way we all live? Well, that's how God lives and how his, the rest of his universe does. This piece here, the gift of love, if you've ever sung it and you remember those words, that the gift of love from God is what life really is all about.
Okay, um, I, which, which mics? Oh, that mic and this mic? Okay, we, we have a vocal duet here. The prayer, I love to listen to that. I, I've listened to it for years on YouTube. I like to cycle through all the different singers that I can think of. Well, as we were playing this earlier this year, it, it's a strings arrangement, and then it came up all of a sudden. I was hearing that, you know what? We have two vocalists in our group who can sing it very well, and they've, we've added that to our program. So Maxi and um, Julia, if you would come up and find your microphones, there is one there and there, and we will close our part of the program here with the prayer. Nella mia prima 
for prayer. Our Father in heaven, I want to thank you so much for your enormous love that has not given up on any of us, for the glorious plan that you have put in place for our salvation, and for the daily walk that you offer us, that we can turn our thoughts, turn our hearts towards you at any moment. You're always there. You are always by our side. Thank you so much for every student on this platform. I am absolutely thrilled to be able to work with them. In your name we pray, amen.